Blessed is the king who cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercilessly with thy help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby thou hast given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. The 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill which had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd went ahead of him, and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem. The whole city was in turmoil, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right, so to you. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which thou hast redeemed us through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph, and was proclaimed as King of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Bless these branches to be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leadeth to eternal life, who liveth and reigneth in glory with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, for those of you at home who received our Holy Week care packages, um, uh, you should have a palm in them, at least one. Now the time to take out those palms. They were pre-blessed. And what we are going to do in a minute here is we are going to sing all glory, laud, and honor. If you get your service booklet, that was mailed to you. And if you did not get these and would like one, please let me know. Uh, but if you get one of these that was mailed to you, the, the lyrics will be on there. So in a minute we will begin singing that. Go ahead and grab your palms and be ready. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Go ahead and begin. Oh, glory, Lord, and 
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, oops, <laughs> now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge. So that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner from the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas? Or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole shouted, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered a whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. They then led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink and mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him which read, 
This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Please take a moment for contemplation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, I have to admit that when I hear that last part of that gospel passage, I can only imagine Charlton Heston. Truly, this was the Son of God. I just, I just can't, I just can't hear that passage, you know, any other way. Amen. So this Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday, we read this really, uh, really lengthy part of the gospel of Jesus going to the cross, and in particular, Jesus, sort of the end of Jesus's trial with Jesus before Pilate. And what's interesting is we have this incident. Of two Jesuses. Jesus, Barabbas, which interestingly means son of the father. And Jesus, whom Pilate makes a point to say, who is called the Messiah. Our Jesus, the real Jesus. Jesus the Christ, the son of God. And we have two Jesuses. And people have the option, if you will, of which Jesus they're going to choose. And they choose pork. They choose the wrong Jesus. So what we have is an entire illustration over several bad examples. How to choose 
the wrong Jesus. Pilate, the leaders, and the crowd all choose the wrong Jesus. See, merely claiming that there's a guy named Jesus might not be enough. There are many Wesleys, for instance, in the world. I have one Wesley. Wesley Snipes is another. Right? And people perhaps, I know they would probably confuse the two, but people perhaps, would, would, they would know there are different ones. I am not the same person, though we have the same name. Someone can have the name of Jesus and not be the same Jesus. We can be claiming to follow a guy named Jesus and be choosing the wrong Jesus. And Pilate and the crowd and the leaders all choose the wrong Jesus for different reasons. Now Pilate, initially, Pilate comes across initially perhaps with a first reading, sounds fairly sympathetic. It sounds like he's just being pressured. Oh, whoa, poor Pilate. He's just stuck in this hard place and he's trying to get out of it. And then, of course, he washes his hands, right? Washes his hands and says, I am innocent of this man's blood. But here's the thing. That's not the way this works. You can't do something wrong. You cannot be an accomplice to something evil and then... Declare, well, you know, it's not really my fault. I'm just going to wipe my hands and do it anyway. That's not the way this works. Pilate interrogated Jesus and, and said himself he found nothing wrong with him. Jesus didn't respond to any of the accusations. Though I find it interesting that Pilate still goes out of his way to say, Jesus, this one called the Messiah. Now, if you listen to any other sermons, you know uh, that I, I, I make a big deal out of this, that Messiah means king. That, that's really all the word means. It was the anoint, God's anointed, God's chosen king. That's what the Messiah was. Pilate knew exactly what he was saying. Do you want to release this, this Jesus Barabbas, this rioter? Or do you want to release this one called the king? I actually is even more interesting when you consider that in the Gospel of Mark, Barabbas is said to have led an insurrection, a riot. It's possible that Barabbas was trying to lead even a revolution against Rome and was the more dangerous one for Pilate. But Pilate mocks what people claim Jesus to be. This, this is your king. Is this, is this really the one you want me to kill? See, I think what Pilate does throughout this whole thing is Pilate is in fear of losing his power. Pilate has an idea that this guy's innocent. At most, he's probably crazy. This other guy's actually a problem. But I could, perhaps he says to himself, I could use the might of the Roman army. I could suppress the crowd. They would have to obey me, but I don't want to get in trouble with Rome, you see. I don't want to cause any more political problems. This is just the easy way out. And oh, look, I wash my hands of it. Pilate is scared of losing his power. And Pilate will do anything to keep it, even if it means killing an innocent man. Sending him to die. Remember, our creed that we recite lists Pilate in it. He doesn't get away with this in Christian tradition. Pilate still stands guilty. He stands guilty because when he looked at the situation, instead of listening to this vision his wife had, instead of listening and paying attention to his own testimony, instead of realizing that he could have stood up for some semblance of justice, Pilate condemns an innocent man to die because it's just more politically expedient to do so. He's in fear of losing his power, and it doesn't matter how he keeps it as long as it's there and it's easy. He's a coward. He takes the easy way out. And in doing so, he chooses 
the wrong Jesus. And the first warning of Palm Sunday is we choose the wrong Jesus. We choose the wrong Jesus when we try to make power its own goal. Power is not bad. Power just is. Power is the ability to do stuff. But it has a purpose. It has a goal. And it's always to serve God. It's always, in this case, it could have been used to, to make a just act. But instead of using it in justice, he used it for himself. And you know the ultimate test of when we know that we've made power its own goal is when we're scared of losing it. When we grip onto anything and are willing to do anything to grab it or to obtain it or to hold on to it, then we've made it its own end. We've made it its own goal. Like Pilate. And in doing so, we might be choosing, we probably are choosing, the wrong Jesus. Now secondly, the, the, the religious leaders. The religious leaders come in and, and they, they have their own reasons for choosing the wrong Jesus. They have been opposed, many of them, now not all of them. Remember that um, Nicodemus, for instance, Joseph of Arimathea, there were, there were some religious leaders who were supporters of Jesus. But many of them were opposed to him from the beginning because he caused too much trouble. It's kind of ironic because many of them wanted to be freed from Rome. They wanted someone, they wanted the, an independent state like they had before Rome had come in. But the problem was that Jesus wasn't willing to do it their way. They wanted an independent state. They wanted a great Israel. They wanted a free Judea. They wanted to get rid of Rome, but they wanted to do it their way and not God's way. God had a method of doing it, and it wasn't the way they wanted it. And there could have been lots of reasons for that. But one of them that seems to come out is that they wanted it as long as it didn't change their life too much. It didn't cause Rome to be a little bit too hard on them, as long as it wasn't challenging for them. I think that's the general story of the Gospels, is that it was fine, God, that you want to do this. It's fine that you want to call us to this. It's fine that we would love to, for you to come and save us, but can, can you make it a little easier on us? Can you save us in a way that makes us have to not do quite as much? Can it not change our way of life maybe so much? Can you just come in and do it and I notice that nothing happened? It was the hard road. That's what Jesus says, right? Take up your cross and follow me. There's a often, if God often calls us to a harder road. God was calling them to a bigger deal, to change more. See, he wasn't, God, Jesus wasn't just, didn't just come in and criticize Rome. He criticized them. Yeah, God is here to save you, but not in the way you think. And you all have a lot to change too. You all have a lot of problems yourself. And that was, that, was, that was a line too far. Criticize Rome all you want, but how dare, how dare you criticize us? And in doing, being defensive about it, they chose the wrong Jesus. They chose a murderer. They chose someone who was actually guilty to actually innocent. And they chose someone who, who participated in an actual riot over Jesus because it Following Jesus would have changed their way of life. It would have been too difficult for them. And so that's the second warning of Palm Sunday. Is we choose the wrong Jesus when we want to do things our way as opposed to God's way. When God has a calling for salvation and that would be too difficult. It would cause too much change in us. It would be too much of a challenge to our way of life. So we'd rather just not do it. Lord, isn't there another way that doesn't require so much on us? We don't want that Savior. We want one that conforms to the way we want it to happen. And when we think like that, when we want it always our way, we're probably choosing the wrong Jesus. And finally, finally the crowds. 
And it's interesting that when Pilate asked the crowds, why do you want me to kill him? They didn't give an answer. They said, oh, crucify him. This, this, was, this was a mob, right? They had been completely riled up. It was absolutely irrational. It was irrational. And these are the same crowds that welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, Hosanna, to the son of David, which is a royal title. And what Jesus claims for himself, he does claim to be the son of David, the Messiah, royal titles. They, he, this is the guy, they thought, that will save us from the Romans. He will lead the next war. Just like the famous Judas Maccabeus had done against the Greeks. Just like they expected the next Messiah to do, like David, to be mighty in battle, to lead them against their enemies, to defeat the Romans. They were looking for a violent revolution. And instead, God said, maybe you're the problem. You see, what the crowds, I think, wanted, what I think the reason the crowds had such a hard time with Jesus is that Jesus placed evil and sin inside the human heart. He didn't allow them to scapegoat it to some other group. Are the Romans good? No, the Romans were a lot of problems. The Romans were not a good, healthy, great society. But Jesus spends more time criticizing hypocrisy, criticizing human sin, than he does talking about the Romans. He hardly ever talks about the Romans other than to basically ignore them and tell the Israelites to give them their money, fine. Pay the tax, okay, don't worry about it. But hey, do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? God preaches to them. He doesn't allow them to export evil onto another group of people. He doesn't allow, allow them to scapegoat another nation or ethnic group or culture. God says, you're the problem. The problem is in the human heart. The problem is not just some external. See, and see, I think we choose the wrong Jesus. And this is the third warning of Palm Sunday. We choose the wrong Jesus when we always want all the bad stuff and all the evil and all the problems to exist somewhere else. When we say to ourselves, well, you know, if only... My people were in charge. If only my people were the only ones around. If only they were not here. If only those people had less power. If only them were no longer an issue. Then all would be well. All would be perfect. We live in this grand utopia. The problem is not me. The problem is not my people or my friends. The problem is always them. It's always somewhere outside of us. And Jesus didn't let them do that. Jesus didn't rile them up. Jesus did not come to lead their revolution against Rome. Jesus didn't tell them they were okay. Jesus told them they were the problem. So they exported their evil to him. They exported all the problems to him. These, they see, this is the kind of Jesus that's the problem. Crucify him. We want the guy who led the insurrection. We want the violent one. We want the murderer. We want the one who tells us we're okay and the Romans are not. That's the Jesus we want, and they chose the wrong Jesus. And that's the third morning for Palm Sunday. So we have Palm Sunday. Jesus goes to the cross. Jesus is condemned to die. Why? Because humanity chooses the wrong Jesus over and over. We choose the wrong Jesus when we're scared of losing our power, so we'll do anything to keep it. We choose the wrong Jesus when we want things done our way. And we're willing to kill to make it happen. We choose the wrong Jesus when we want to export evil outside of ourselves and, and ignore the one in our own heart. And sometimes in all three of those, we are willing to go, human beings, definitely, willing to go great lengths, even let people die than to have any of those challenged. And when we do that, we have chosen the wrong Jesus.
So the challenge of Palm Sunday is to choose the right one. Choose Jesus the Messiah, not Jesus Barabbas. Choose the Jesus who might threaten your power. Choose the Jesus who might challenge you to do things differently. And choose the Jesus that digs into the deep recesses of the human heart. To that Jesus be the glory, now and forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. I beg your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and George, our bishop. For this diocese and parish, and for all ministers and people in God's holy church. I bid your prayers for the nations, for Donald our President, Greg our Governor, and David our Mayor, for goodwill and peace among the nations, and that God will grant his grace unto us while we await the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I beg your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him, that they may come to know the power of faith in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. I bid your prayers for all who are sick, injured, disabled, anxious, or afraid, that God will send his healing grace unto them, that they may be made whole. Pray for those in any need or trouble.
I bid your prayers of thanksgiving to all who this day are celebrating important days in their lives. Praise God for those in every generation who Christ has been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Stephen, our patron, and all thy saints. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day, that they may pray for us in time of need. before the offertory. Uh, we are collecting, um, we have been collecting mic boxes during this season of Lent to support the Grayson County Crisis Center. For those of you who picked up those mic boxes and are continuing to uh, be a part of this ministry that we do to them, I encourage you to continue doing that. Uh, I will let you know when we collect those, when we have plans for that. But consider continuing to help donate and we will take a collection um, We'll either take it in after Easter, have a drop-off box, or wait until all this is over and collect them then. Some details are still to be determined. But please continue to do that and to think about um, the Grayson County Crisis Center as since they are one of the places we minister to during this time. And also, of course, Wakefield Elementary School, uh, as, which is our a school that we have adopted as a ministry. Um, also, of course, please remember everybody, all nurses and doctors, health workers, and all schools and children during this time. 
A few other announcements. This coming Thursday is Monday Thursday. We will have a live stream service at 6.30. Live stream service on Good Friday at 6.30. Uh, a stream service at 8.30 on Holy Saturday. And then next Sunday, 9.30 a.m. for Easter. Uh, for those of you who received the care packages, the booklet should have the entire service in that for you. Uh, later this day, we are starting our Christian education back up. At 5 p.m., there will be a Zoom meeting. It was The link is in the email uh, in our newsletter. If you do not have the newsletter, please sign up for that. Particularly now, it is the best way to know about what's going on. But we are going to have a Bible study where we can continue our journey through the Old Testament with the book of Joshua at 5 p.m. this evening. Through Zoom, I will put the link on the Facebook page for you. At 11 a.m., we also have a scheduled preschool and elementary school class. If you have children in those ages or friends that do, please tell them about that. The link um, should be on the Facebook page and in the newsletter. And we will, we will work to make sure if you have any trouble with that, please let me know. We will make sure that you are able to participate in those. During this time of being mostly online, we also are starting to use our YouTube channel a little bit more. The link is in our website and uh, has also been posted to our Facebook page. Please be sure to check those out. But I, can, I cannot emphasize enough that right now, particularly, it is important to make sure you're getting our newsletter. So if you're not, please sign up for those. Keep watch of our Facebook page. It's the best way to keep up with everything. And also be sure uh, to please um, donate during this time. Um, we do take online donations through Tithely. There is a link on our website and there was a link in the newsletter. Please donate and continue to support the ministry through this. If St. Stephen's and what we do is valuable to, uh, 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 valuable to you, please continue to support us in those ways. Now I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, Present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
world without end. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has called us, we are going to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us.
be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray thee graciously to behold this thy family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. They're into the fall second.